So this class here, as you can see, has a vehicle. We'll make that as the parent class, and then we'll just do two of these, not the, not the plane, maybe, or you choose car info or car plane, doesn't matter. Um, and then the parent class has some properties that are common to all the other subclasses, right? <clears throat> and again, it doesn't have to be this way, but we'll just pick and choose a few of the properties that we think are um, common to all those classes. And I think the next chapter deals with like abstract classes and interfaces, and we're not going to cover that in this in this course. But if you want to read about it, um, that's something that might be worthwhile. So let's go ahead and create a project in here. I'm going to delete all these here, and we'll create a new package. We'll call this just the not class the package. Um, vehicle. Okay, let's call it vehicles. It's fine. Let's make it short. <clears throat> so vehicles package. We're going to create a class. We'll call this the vehicle class, singular. Um, this is just a standard class. We're going to create two more classes. So we're going to create two more. We'll call this car. Again, just standard class. And then we have one more. I guess we'll, we'll call it, um, we'll use plane. Okay, so the plane class. <clears throat> then we have one more for our main program. This is the main program. So we we'll start from here. So we have the method, main method to start. So we have four classes all together. So we'll come back to the main method later after we implement all the uh, code inside those three classes. So again, they're all in the same package, so we don't have to worry about importing them. They're already imported here in the package. Okay, so let's go to the vehicle class. This is the parent class, right? This is, this is so usually, um, in this case, we just call it the parent class, but uh, you could think of this as the abstract. Okay, so if you read chapter um, 11, tell some abstract classes. And again, uh, well, we haven't talked about that, but abstract class is a special class that cannot instantiate objects. Okay, you cannot say uh, vehicle V is equal to new vehicle. It won't let you do that. Same thing with the interfaces. The interface is, is, a, is a even broader uh, type of class. Okay, but this is a concrete class. Uh, although I put extract here, it just, um, it does, it's not a after class, a concrete class. So in this vehicle class, what are things that maybe like a few properties that are common in the car and the plane? Um, something simple. Weight. What? All vehicles might have a weight. A weight? Yeah. Okay, right. So we have a weight. Uh, so this could be private. Um, we'll just go whole number or decimal? We'll go double, right? Double weight. So that's common for both, right? Something that's common. Gas mileage or fuel mileage? Fuel mileage. Okay. Again, we just call it um, fuel. And I'll add one here. We'll just say each has a year, right? The year with the car or the plane was made. So this will be just int year. And then let's just say that when we um, we add some functions to this, so these let's just these are the uh, things that are common. We add one more. I'm going to add one more here. We'll call this the string of uh, brand. 
I guess, for the type of plane, like is it Boeing or Airbus or Ford, right? That's common for both vehicles. What about functions? What do they have in common? So we could create one, something. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so that, right, we have getters, headers. We can create those. Uh, just do that really quickly down here. We'll put getters and setters. These are for all these four up there. So right click down here, right? Go to the source and generate getters and setters. Select them all. And click OK. Or actually, they go up here. It didn't like it, what I would have down here. But I'm going to move them down there. So. Move all these to the getter and setter. These are usually linked down the bottom because you don't you don't really touch them. I'm gonna add one more here, okay? One more here. And we're just gonna say, well, this plane or this car is moving, we also check for a Boolean type uh, for the engine state. So this could be their on or off, right? True or false. Uh, you know what? Maybe that maybe not boolean. Um, maybe on off. So we'll say. What well, if you say true or false? Yeah. Now we use string. So string will be like in this case would be either uh, on or off. Okay. So and we can check the state uh, to see whether that's on or off, and then we'll say oh car is stopped or moving. So functions will be uh, maybe things like you start engine, stop, accelerate, and things like that, right? Common to both, I suppose. So we have a um, public, I was going to say you start the engine, right? So start, we'll just call it start. And we also have a stop, right? So the auto or vehicle can be also stopped. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's take this a, a step further. When we start the engine, what do we check for? Usually, like, it's the engine, yeah, right? So if it's already on, then I guess we'll throw a message saying it's already on, right? If it's off, then we turn it to on, okay? So we'll say if, um, if, I guess this engine state, Uh, equals <clears throat> on. If it's already on, then we'll just say system out uh, engine is already on. And, and we'll do nothing else. <clears throat> we will Turn the engine on, so the engine state will be set to on. Again, you can call that directly, or I'm going to use the getter. Same thing, set engine. Right? Get used to this set engine. How we do it is fine. To on. <coughs> we didn't have the setter for the engine. Um, so let's just go ahead and create that. Again, let me do down here and create that setter and getter for engine state. Okay, so we've got the setter and getter for the engine state. Set engine state. On. 
then the stop will be similar, right? So if, if this engine state is already off, or if this get engine state is off, right? Then we do nothing, or engine's already off, otherwise. Sys out engine is already off. Otherwise, we're going to print or oh, set the engine first. Set engine to off. And then we'll also put a statement. I forgot to print a statement out to say engine is turned off or, or is off. Same thing up here. When we turn it on, we'll, I'll put a message saying engine is let's put on. I don't like turned off, but it's off. Okay, so this is our parent class, and then now we're going to implement the car, right? Let's go to the car, and the car is going to extend, so it extends the vehicle. And same thing with the plane, right? If you do the plane as well, uh, the plane extends the vehicle. So we have a class vehicle that's been extended by two subclasses, car and plane. That's legal, but you cannot do two. I know that some languages may allow you, uh, I'm not sure which one, but I, I heard it before, you can actually allow you to extend multiple classes that's a bit weird and confusing but um, it's not ideal so if you save the car and the plane class without any implementation and then if you go to the main program under the main method here if we then um, <clears throat> instantiate two objects so I'm going to put in the global space Okay, so that we have access to um, to the variable. So up here, we'll put um, private static. We have to make them static. It's a uh, a car. We call it just car, lowercase. We'll do one for the plane as well. Private static plane class plane. Right. Notice I did not instantiate that, right? We just create that variable. It doesn't exist in memory. There's no memory allocation until you instantiate it. So but you make that available in the public in the global space so that later on in your code you can just call that directly without passing data over. I mean that's if that's ideal, then you do that. Otherwise, put it inside your main method so that it's only local to the main method and it will be uh, wiped out when you complete your program. So in here then we're going to instantiate the car. When I run the program, the car will be equals to new car. <clears throat> Same thing with the plane. So I want to print a message saying when you create a new car. I want to print a message like we did earlier, say a new car has been created, right? So where would be a good place to put that? Do we put that in the car class or do we put that in the vehicle class? What do you think? In the car, why? 
here, right? So that makes a lot of sense. So you put that in the car constructor class, right? In, 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 the, in the car class. Same thing with the plane. Right? So let's do that. Go in the car. And we're going to put a constructor in here for the car. <clears throat> for now, we it takes it takes no parameter, and we're just going to upload a message saying a car for a new car has been instantiated or created. I will do the same with the plane, so I'm just going to copy this over to the plane class. Save this for now. Over to the plane, we'll put that in here. We'll change the class, I mean the um, yeah, class name to plane. And say new plane. Probably it's more correct to say new plane object has been instantiated, but um, it's, it's understood. Plane, not plan. So now when we call, when we create each of these objects and if you run it, you see that we have those two messages saying a new car and new plane have been instantiated. So at that point, then we can access the information. Right? We can set up the weight, the year, the brand. Um, we could also add another uh, a field called speed. We didn't do that, but you could add speed to it. And you can also add a accelerate to accelerate the, the, the vehicle and so on. But we're just going to do those uh, two simple um, functions, and if you have time, we'll add some more. But for now, so we got those two created. Again, we don't see here. Uh, actually, the uh, vehicle constructor is also being called, right? Because we didn't provide any output statements, so you don't see it, but it's actually being called. Okay, if it if it does, if you output a message from the vehicle class, it will actually supersede these, right? It will go before um, these two methods down here. And so you can see this is like uh, Brian said is is correct to put inside a very specific class because we're talking about a very specific object. Although you could do this, uh, you can you know work around this by passing by calling the vehicle class and you pass a parameter from the car class to the vehicle class, right? So it will still say a new you put a variable name has been instantiated. So how would you do that if you were to go that route? You could create a constructor in the vehicle class and you could have it pass the parameter of string mm -hmm. and then do a message or something. And sure. then when you go to uh, initiate the object, you would just put that string that you want in the actual uh, frame. Sure, yeah. Exactly, right? Because it would look for that car class. I have a car that didn't have it, it would just call the parent class. Right? So that's another method too. Yes. Because remember in, in the subclass you can pass any parameter to the parent sub uh, constructor. Okay. So um, something we didn't put here, something else could be, you know, some properties that might be only available to car that is not compatible or not common in plane. Uh, would be like uh, I guess what steel wheel, right? Do plane have steel wheel? Yeah they do too. <laughs> Some do, right? But but still, um, maybe I don't know what what things would car and, and then keys. Well, they have keys, right? I don't know. What they have. I guess propeller and things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's see. So when we Yeah. Do you think anything that is not common in playing and call and something is very I guess wings, right? We can we can talk about more wingspan. That applies only to a plane. Right? So yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know but so maybe we can do that. Let's just let's just um, just just to demo that the other example, uh, we can do like a, a private um, 
a double wing span a measure in I guess feet and that only applies let's just only applies to plane and all the others are a common drill of all of them so we put that in the main vehicle class Okay, so now, <clears throat> so when you create a new car, um, we could, I mean, there's like lots of ways. You could pass those information to the constructor. So okay, let's so go the vehicle class. Why don't we create a constructor with the vehicle class, so that it would have all these four um, five parameters. Okay, so we'll go in public vehicle, and we'll pass all this information, and we go with the uh, just in order the weight. Let's just put weight here. Uh, double fuel. Int year and then the strain brand and the engine state. Uh, yeah, engine state we can just leave it off because it's going to be defaulted to off, right? It, it's it would, it'll be weird if you have a object instance with the engine on, so we don't need that um, off for the state. Up here we actually set that to off already if you want to, but we'll do that inside the constructor. So inside the constructor. We can then set the weight to the weight, set the fuel to fuel, set year to year, set brand to brand. And we just set the engine state to off. We just forced it to by default. It's off anyway. I mean, it's, well, you know, if you don't put it, it would, it would just be empty string, right? So you want to say it's off. So this one takes four parameters. And if you want to include, like, like when you create the plane, include the uh, wingspan as a fifth parameter, then it will take care of that inside the plane constructor. I mean, the plane, uh, yeah, constructor, right? <clears throat> if you notice that if you go back to your car and your plane, you have the error because now we don't have a. Um, Uh, why is this? Yeah, because now we don't have a constructor uh, for the blank or the empty uh, empty constructor. Okay, so by definition, by the, by the rule, if you create your own constructor, then you must always, if you like, in this case, either uh, call the super and supply all the parameters to match your super class, right? You have to because now I don't have an empty constructor for vehicle. Once you put one, then the empty constructor, which is the default provided by Java, is no longer valid. It's no longer there. You have to explicitly create one. So it's always a good idea to create that plain constructor. Okay, so I go to vehicle class, create that empty constructor called vehicle. So that if I just want to create that empty object and I can instantiate each of those manually through the uh, getters and setters, I can still do that. And also, it would uh, resolve all these issues in your subclasses so that you don't have to call the superclass and then pass those information up to the parent class. <clears throat> 
So now it will call the blink constructor because this is a blink constructor. So it will call that um, by default. Same thing with a vehicle. And then I'm going to go ahead and create that getter and setter for the wingspan. Do that here. If you go up to the wingspan and then just mouse over that and just say create getter and setter. And it should create that for you. Okay. <clears throat> here. And this is our constructors. Okay, so they look kind of identical, except we have one parameter for the plane. Now, in our main program, we if you do this, this is fine, right? You create that, and everything is just defaulted to whatever uh, values they have in the vehicle class and the plane class as well. It will be empty string, uh, set of zero, if it's in the boolean, it will be false, and so on. So if you go into the main program, you say car that. Uh, start engine or just start if you just do the car and if I run this you will see that it will say car um, is now an engine is now on right because it was off initially and then just to test that if you call it twice you call it car start again it should say engine is already on okay so here we have engines already on so I mean it's almost like writing a game here right <clears throat> so that works fine and um, if you want to you know show the <clears throat> information about the car So usually, if you would say car dot um, car dot get you know get um, you know brand like that, right? And and you have to echo that out, system out, come here, and then do that, right? And you also want to say you know brand. You do all that. I do all that. I get that statement says the brand is null because there's no value. And you can print them out <clears throat> some more. Uh, what if you just want to print car? If I do this, if you say system out car, I want to print out the object. Okay, I'm not sure we did this before. Maybe we did. If I do that, then I want this car to be printed. All its information to be printed. Because if I do now, um, you just print me this object, right? This a uh, uh, memory address. You don't want that. So let's go into the car class. And the pink plane class has its own as well. So let's go in here and create a function. Uh, we're going to override. Okay, this is method override. The public uh, string uh, to string class a method right this is a uh, a method that is <clears throat> part of the object class and you can use this method every time when you do a system print you do a system out print line then uh, print an object the object class the real the car class can will call this two string automatically and then print whatever is in here okay so now we can have um, Actually, no, is it void or is it string? String returns a string. Yes. Yeah, it must be string. Okay. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to say um, a string. Let's call it str. <clears throat> it's equal to um, the. <clears throat> we'll put the information here, right? So the vehicle 
a brand and so on. So I put here uh, brand. So that comes from the super because I'll have the function function here, right? So super dot get brand. I'm going to say string plus equal a back slash n just to create a new line. Uh, we have the year. We have that plus super dot get year. String plus equal the weight. Plus super that get weight string plus equal slash fuel <coughs> string plus equal oops, I have an extra equal sign here. We have short memory. <clears throat> Engine state. Engine state plus super that get engine state. I think that's that's all we have, right? And then finally we should return it, right? Return the string. So it will Remove that red squiggly line under the two string. <clears throat> so now, when you print, you you print, uh, you know, sys out car, it will print all these up for you automatically. I mean, since you, you you can format it here, so I don't have to do like string that, you know, car that get your car that get something. And you can still get it each individual value, but. I just want to print everything out. Okay, we can do the same thing with the plane. Just copy this and uh, paste to the plane somewhere down here. And then we're just going to call, we're going to add one more. We need to add the wingspan for the plane because the car doesn't have that. So I'm going to put uh, the very last one here string plus equal wingspan. Plus, and this is not going to be super, right? It's it's local to this class, so basically it's just going to be either this wingspan or get wingspan. <clears throat> or you can say this that get wingspan, right? So you can finish it between the super and the this. So this here refers to local class. Super is the parent. <clears throat> And as you can see, because the, the plane is a subclass of the vehicle, I can access all its uh, um, data directly from here using the super that can't find. Okay, let's save that. Uh, hopefully everything's okay. We we'll go here, and I'm going to print run it again. Well, let's, let's turn off that, remove that second, third statement there. Car start, car start, this just to show that it actually works. And it's going to print out every information about this car. So here we have the default values for the car. We didn't set anything, so mostly this is what you're going to get, right? We get that the engine is on. Because we set that to be on, we start that engine, and then the rest will be just um, empty. So you from here. We should put a dash <coughs> dashes up here, but we didn't supply the brand. Uh, we just apply the year and the information. <clears throat> so it seems to work. We can do the same thing here. I could just go and copy this and print plane. So for the plane, we should have one extra field called the wingspan. Right? So here's the plane. <clears throat> and we have the wingspan of zero, 0,0.
Okay, so let's go back up here to lines 10 and 11, and let's modify these two here. Uh, since we supplied four fields, <clears throat> so if you look at the car, we have, well, I mean the vehicle, we have um, the weight, fuel, engine, and brand. So go to the car here. The weight is, let's just say, um, I don't know, 2,500 pounds, right? It's pretty light. It's a ton. Um, like a little smart car, I guess. What else do we have? Short memory here. The fuel. What do we put for fuel? Is that, do we measure that by the size of the fuel tank or the, the, the mile per gallon in, uh, on the highway or just call whatever we want, right? Just say um, uh, 35 <coughs> like MPG on the highway. And then we have the year and the brand. So the year will be I'll just call this uh, 2018 brand new car, and the brand is a I don't know what do you what do you call I guess Cooper. Now that's something that doesn't seem right here. And and Right, so the car doesn't have the constructor because we didn't create one that has these four parameters. So to solve this, we need to add that in here and the car. So I'm going to copy this from the vehicle. I'm going to copy this part here, put into the vehicle, <clears throat> we'll leave the one as blank, as is, because sometimes we might have might need that. So we'll create another one here called public car, and we'll put that in here. And then we're going to pass this on to the super, right? So we'll just call super, and then again, put those in here. But now we're going to patch just the variable names, not the declaration, just the string. And we'll let the constructor and the parent class instantiate and then uh, initialize these data for us. So I do the same thing for the plane. I'm going to copy this method here, this constructor car, go to the plane and add it to the plane. We'll change that to plane. and the rest should still be fine. <clears throat> so let's see, does it work? Um, what does it work? Is it the move? Oh, it didn't save it, maybe. Yeah, didn't, gotta save it. Okay, so we got that. Now the plane, we could do something similar. Okay, so the plane uh, will be like, oh my god, that's a big number. So we'll put what? I don't know, 150,000, I don't know, let's say 150,000. The mile should be, I have no clue. So we just put like, I don't know what, what, what do you, what's the number? 2,000, yeah. 2, okay. And I just say it's a 2017, um, I guess we'll just call this is the Boeing. Whatever that brand is, but I'm sure they are. And we also want to add a wingspan. So I said the last parameter, we'll put a wingspan, let's just say about um, in feet. So how wide is that? 80? No, no, 120? Is that pretty? <laughs> Let's just say in feet, right? 
So now you can see that that is a fifth parameter which we don't have. I'm going to go into the uh, plane class. You're going to modify the constructor here to include that wingspan. You go in here to the area end and just put uh, double uh, wingspan. Let me turn on the So we have the wingspan, but when we pass these four to the constructor of the parent class, and the parent class, we still need to deal with the wingspan. So after we pass that to the constructor and the parent class, we need to also set the wingspan locally. So pass the wingspan in here, right? We set that here because it's only available inside the plane class, and it isn't available in the uh, parent class. So we pass those four up, and we'll set anything that's local here inside the plane class. So now, um, this should be good to go. And I'm going to, instead of car start twice, I'll put plane start. Okay. <clears throat> and then we'll put the information here as well. So go ahead and click start and run. And here we have, I didn't, you know what, I want to I wanna separate these, so let's just go back into the code here a little bit. And <clears throat> just sys out here a couple of dashes to separate them so you can see them. <clears throat> here we go. All right, so both engines are on. It didn't say which engine's on. We could say playing engine and whatever it is. That's fine. So we have our Mini Cooper 2018. Weight is 20,000. We could have put here again in either uh, pounds or ton. You need to convert, convert that. 35, maybe MP, MPG. And highway one is in the city. The engine stays on. They're both on. They're going. Bless you. And then, bless you again. The, so these four here are same, right? These are five here are part of the vehicle class, the parent class. All these are, except in the plane we have a wingspan, which is only applies to the plane. So that's how you will construct new objects and pass some data that are very uh, similar or that are shared by all your uh, classes to the parent class to initialize for you.